I'm going to take you through a box mission with some helpful tips along the way, and we're starting right now. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. Welcome to A Star Citizen's Guide to the Galaxy. This is Subliminal here, and today I'm going to take you through running a box mission. I know this seems boring, but along the way, I'll give you some tips to save you time and keep you safe around the verse. This guide is designed to help new players, however, the tips here apply to almost everything you do in the verse. If you're a veteran player, stick around. There are a lot of tips here, and some of them I learned while I was making this guide. Plus, your feedback and comments below will help future episodes. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. By the way, if you are a new player, I created a new player guide that's a great prerequisite to this guide. If you're extremely new or haven't played Star System yet, I would watch that video first and then come back here. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is get prepped. There are a couple items I recommend you should buy. My first tip is depending on where you're doing missions, you may want to buy a cold or hot suit. By no means is this required, and to be honest, if you're low on Alpha UBC, you should hold off, but regardless, I'll quickly show you where to find them and even how to get a big discount on one of them. If you're doing missions around Microtech like we'll be doing today, you might get a bit frosty. So first we'll pick up a Novikov armor set. To do this, head to any space station with a cargo deck. If you're near Microtech, Port Tressler above New Babbage would be the best. Each space station is a little different, but after you leave the entrance elevators, look for the interstation transit elevators here. Head inside and select Cargo Center. Once on the cargo deck, keep left until you get to Cargo Services. Look for these terminals. Here, you can purchase a wide range of wares that all pertain to trading or industrial professions. What we want to buy is the Novikov armor found in the Undersuit tab. And also, don't forget the helmet under the Armor tab. If you're doing missions around Hurston, then you may want to get a hot suit. These can be found at space stations with refineries. From what I've seen, these are usually found at L1 Lagrange points. Her L1 would be the closest one if you're at Hurston. Again, all space stations are laid out a little bit different, but look for the interstation transit system again, select refinery in the elevator, head down these stairs. After crossing this bridge, keep straight ahead following the sign for service. Enter the door for Mining Support Center, and find these terminals. Buying here is the same as buying the cold suit, however, do you notice something different? Yeah. My second tip is that all equipment purchased from a refinery is at about 50% off right now. This includes mining lasers that are usually over 100,000 alpha UEC. You'll definitely want to come back by here once you've gained enough capital to invest in a mining vehicle. My third tip is another item that you can buy, but it certainly isn't necessary. It's a multi-tool with a tractor beam attachment. This can come in handy if a package somehow falls out into space. And, I mean, who doesn't want to do this? Since I feel like everyone watching this who hasn't yet enlisted to Star Citizen may suddenly want to enlist, it might be a good time to mention that if you sign up with a free account using the link in the description, you'll receive an additional 5,000 Alpha UEC to help you get started in the verse. Okay, enough with the shenanigans, let's get to actually delivering some boxes. Before we accept the delivery mission, we'll want to exercise my fourth tip, and that's to read the description of all of the available delivery missions. There seems to be two types of routes, one where you pick up all three packages at the first location, and another where you pick up three packages from three different locations and deliver them to one drop-off location. What you choose depends on where you're located. Use your discretion, but just be conscious of it. Tip number four is to try to find a mission that has all of the pickup and drop-off locations on one planet. This first one, for instance, has you picking up all the boxes at SMO18 on Microtech, and each drop-off location is also on Microtech. New Babbage is just a major city on this planet. This will save you the time of quantuming to another moon, or even worse, like tip number five, avoid missions that have you picking up and delivering packages to Lagrange points. These aren't immediately in the vicinity of major planets, and again, cause a lot of extra time traveling. Just to recap, the best missions keep you on the same planet. If those aren't available, ones that include one moon are just fine. Avoid two different moons and one planet like this mission if possible. And finally, don't even bother with routes that involve Lagrange points. The last tip I have before we get going is number six, and that is that missions in the personal tab in your contracts manager have the potential to be unlawful. So if you're a very fresh player, I'd avoid these for now until you get a couple of notches in your belt. 
The last thing you need is to get a crime stat and be hunted by the UEE or even worse, a player with your bounty. All right, let's go ahead and pick up this first route that is conclusive to Microtech. Since this is a mission where we pick up all of the packages first, there is only one location. Let's head there. And we'll exercise my seventh tip, and that is that using the star map is not always necessary. Since we only have one location to go to, just take off, spool up, and head down to SMO 18. The star map can be buggy at times, and it's best to avoid it as much as possible. For these type of missions, I'd say the only scenario to use it would be if you are on the opposite side of a moon and you needed to get to the main planet. Even then, you can just jump to an ohm marker first to negate the star map. Alright, now that we're near the pickup location, we'll engage cruise control by clicking C. My eighth tip is while heading in, do not head straight for the location. In Star Citizen, planets and moons have an atmosphere that causes a lot of drag. This will slow you down significantly, so head towards the location but aim over the atmosphere. It's easy to see on most planets and moons. Then use free look by holding Z and looking down. Don't start your descent until you're directly above your location. This will save you an exorbitant amount of time. Head down and watch your speed, especially at night. At night, the only indication of how close you are to the site may be the distance marker on your HUD. In some rare cases, the facility lights you see here may not be visible because either the facility hasn't spawned in yet, or adverse weather conditions could be hindering your view. This brings me to my ninth tip, and that's turning on your ship's headlights with L. On some ships, this light can light up the entire area. Some planets or moons can get really dark. All right, we're here. Let's land and keep my 10th tip in mind. Know your ship's capabilities. Every ship is different. This is a starter ship and has terrible upward thrust. Combine this with not having stellar durability, and this can happen. It happens to the best of us, no worries. We'll just spawn at the space station where we left off and head back down. A few moments later. All right, that's more like it. Actually, my 11th tip is to land as close to the pickup location as you feel comfortable with. Using third person by tapping F4 makes this easier as well. Walking on some planets can be pretty slow depending on the weather. Wind will slow your walking speed and it has been known to knock you down as well and this can be avoided by shortening the distance you have to walk from your ship to the facility. All right, let's head inside. We'll use a tip from a previous guide, and that's clicking at buttons you need to interact with without holding F, aim at it first, and just tap F instead. Pick up the package, and set it down in your cabin. This brings me to my next tip, number 12, and that's if at all possible, set packages down on top of things in your ship. For example, if you have a bed in a Titan or 100i, set the packages down on the bed. Sometimes packages can clip through the hull of the ship and fall out into space. Adding some extra geometry between the object and the hull can minimize this issue. I actually can't do this in the Aurora, so I just placed it on the flattest part of the cabin floor. Alright, head back inside and repeat the process. The Aurora has very little space, so I'll place the second package on top of the first. Usually, the third package is in a hab across the complex. For this, just get back into your ship and fly over to it. This planet frequently has bad weather conditions that slow your movement speed, and with the weight of the package, it makes it even worse. Alright, now that we have our final package, we'll place it on the top of the stack and get back into the pilot seat. Before we take off, my 13th tip is to plan your route in your head before taking off. The last thing you want to do is be sitting outside of an armistice zone in your little starter ship and be fiddling around with your Moby Glass. You might get caught with your pants down. It's unlikely, but you could get attacked by a player. For this route, everything is on the same planet, so it's relatively simple. The only recommendation I'd have is to save the new Baba's delivery for last. My only reason for this in this particular instance is if you want to spend some of your credits you've earned during this mission, New Babbage has some of the best shops by far in the verse. Almost everything can be purchased there, so you can swing by after the final delivery if you need to. All right, let's take off. Be mindful of the wind. Fly straight up and use your pitch ladder to get as close to 90 degrees as possible. It's probably best to use your cruise control. Actually, let's throw in another tip, number 14, because this ship is slow. If you don't already own one, you can rent or purchase an Avenger Titan. This can be done at the cargo deck we were at earlier. It can be rented daily, weekly, or monthly at the prices shown on screen. Of course, 
you can't do this if you're just starting out, but it's good to add it to your wish list. Back to the mission. Knowing the precise moment you've left the atmosphere can be tricky. So my 15 tip is to engage your quantum drive and wait until the red indicators turn blue or whatever color your HUD is. Then use my 16th tip and that would be to do a decoupled about face. Decoupled mode is a bit more advanced for the scope of this guide, but we'll just dabble in it for a second. You can engage it by tapping V. I'll explain this as simply as I can. When decoupled, your ship will continue moving in the direction it was going, but you are free to turn around in any direction. I recommend doing this because if you're fooling around with the quantum system outside of Atmo, you might find yourself drifting back in and you'll find yourself unable to quantum until you get enough altitude to try it again. Now that you're looking backwards while flying forwards, find your intended marker and quantum travel to it. But you have to remember to tap V again to recouple. If not, you will slowly fall down to the planet as you're unable to give forward thrust. All right, head towards the site out of that moment. Once over the site, head down and land near the entrance. For my 17th tip, when you land, power off your engines with I. Now, the reasons for this have varied throughout the game's development, and there are tons of reasons why, but for this guide, just understand that the game's physics states treat ships differently depending on if they're powered off or not. A ship with its engines off will settle and be less likely to be taken by wind. Having this little aurora blow off the side of this hill would be funny to watch in a YouTube video, but not when your car goes in. I'm sure some of you veteran players can leave some comments of why this is a good practice. For now, let's get moving. Take a quick look at the drop-off location. Take note of the last three numbers of the package that's to be delivered. Pick up the corresponding package and take it inside. Make sure when you place it, you're not selecting the box and placing it. Rather, just hold F and click when you're over the word place on the shelf. Or just aim and tap F like I mentioned earlier. All right, one down, two to go. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put on that Novikov arm. Next, we'll hop in and take off. Head back outside of Atma. Pick your next destination. I'm saving new Babbage for last, so we'll go to SMO 13 first. While our quantum is taking over, let's talk about our 18th tip, and that will be to fix a nasty bug. When you select a location to quantum travel to that is on the other side of a planet, your ship should aim over the horizon and spine jump you around. Pay attention every time you jump, because sometimes the spine action will bug out and the quantum system will careen you straight into the planet, causing a ton of wasted time and anger. If you notice this happening, you can either cancel the QT by pressing B again, or you can turn off your engines with I, and it should cancel your jump at any point. All right, my friend, you know the routine. Tip number 19 is that as long as there are no bugs at play, you can actually rearm, repair, and refuel at these locations if they have landing pads. This second delivery location actually has a machine for you to place the box in. Just tap the drop off arrow, wait for it to open, and place the box inside. Let's head out and deliver this last one. All right, I'm kind of out of traversal tips, so we'll skip ahead slightly. Delivering here is simple. Head straight down to the marker and land on the rooftop. Tip number 20 is one that I should have mentioned earlier, but you can adjust your movement speed while walking by using scroll wheel up and down. Once you enter the doors on the rooftop, you'll see another drop-off machine. Drop your package off and roll through your dough. You've just been awarded 8,000 off of UBC. Spend it wisely. All right, this is officially the longest script I've ever written. My last and final tip for the three of you that stuck around is a tough one, and that's doing multiple routes at the same time. In theory, you could accept all of these missions in your contract manual. This can be beneficial because as you can see, some of these routes have packages in the same locations. My recommendation is, if you're really fresh, just stick to the single route. Navigating the Moby Glass trying to figure out what mission you have tracked is cumbersome. If doing a solo route was a breeze and you want some extra challenge min-maxing these missions, I'd recommend trying to do two or three at a time. You'll want to take a second to find missions that feature the same locations. Also, make sure you have a bigger ship than the Aurora I've been using, maybe an Avenger Titan. Trying to fit more than four boxes here would likely cause issues with them clipping and falling out. The benefit here is you can save yourself some trips. The downside is, if you find yourself in a situation where you have, say, six packages and need to deliver the last three to complete three missions at once and the server crashes, well then you just wasted a ton of time, so proceed at your own risk. 
veteran players, please let me know in the comments what I might have missed or if you have any additional tips you would like to share in a future episode. New players, if you haven't enlisted with Star Citizen, you should sign up for a free account today using my referral code. There's a link in the description. You'll receive an extra 5,000 Alpha UEC that is very important for new players. If you need additional help, there is a channel Discord linked in the description as well with a helpful community. Also, feel free to ask me questions live over on Twitch. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending Alpha UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.